Hi again then guys and welcome to another car review from the very first Forza Motorsport game where it all began of course and just before I get into the meat of this review you'll have to pardon my slightly more nasal voice than usual it's because I'm still getting over a cold but as far as this car goes if you've been following this particular aspect of my Forza videos from the very first game that is you might be noticing a bit of a strange pattern here this is the third Mercedes that we featured in this series that is no longer in Forza. And all three of them are kind of a big deal. The CLK GTR race car, the CLK DTM touring car, and now this, a top of the line CL65 AMG. These are not some small special edition cars that you could easily miss. These are a big deal. So it's kind of strange to me how Turn 10 chose to leave them behind. And even this is a supercar level luxury coupe it's a continent crushing bentley continental gt rival which for some strange reason just got left behind now if you fast forward to forza 4 if i recall correctly there was a dlc car i think it was dlc which was the newer mercedes cl which is an equally monstrous machine and i personally think it's a stunning looking car i love that generation of cl this one though does not get the love that it deserves and of the three marks that they chose to leave behind, you could easily and comfortably make an argument that this is the most obvious choice to leave behind. It's a little dated, of course, it's not the most ostentatious looking thing around, it's actually a surprisingly understated car, and for those who don't know why you should consider the CL to be a big deal, this is essentially a two-door version of the top-of-the-line Mercedes, the S-Class. It has been the ultimate Mercedes for quite some time when it comes to luxury, and although SUVs tend to dominate the market these days, for decades, luxury limos, or sedans, really was where it was at for executives and officials, and the S-Class represented the ultimate in that. Now, the CL is a rather niched idea, and it's the idea of taking that S-Class and everything that makes it great, but putting it into a two-door car. It doesn't sound like it would be a good sell of an idea, but it survived multiple generations and is a great performance car. And as soon as you look into the specs for this thing, you can immediately see why. It has literally supercar level specs. This is an A2 category vehicle. It has 604 horsepower stock. That's not tuned, that's completely stock straight out of the factory and a massive 737 pound feet of torque now of course it is heavy it's a four-seater it's packed full of luxury and it's just a mercedes in general which means it's probably going to be heavy anyway it weighs 2155 kilos that's technically 2.2 metric tons so it's still lighter than a bentley continental gt but it is heavier than a lot of cars on the road, including some of Mercedes' own SL models, which can also be surprisingly heavy for a two-door convertible. Now, as far as performance goes, this is always an overwhelmingly fast car in a straight line. And in the newer Forza game, Forza 4 for instance, that newer model is also fantastic in a straight line. It very much feels like a German muscle car, in effect, that lazy low-down torque, surprisingly low revving v12 engine it's a monster of a car and even the standard engine has incredible tuning capabilities but when it comes to cornering a 2.2 ton luxury coupe isn't exactly ideal or at least that's what you'd think because that's the strangest thing about this car in forza one the amount of respect that they give this car in effect by making it really as OP as it is, and let's be honest, that's exactly what this car feels like in the first game. As you can kind of tell from this replay even, the amount of grip and the cornering ability that this car has is, to be honest, kind of ridiculous. It's way too good. Now, of course, as a fan of the Mercedes CL, especially the top of the line models like this one, I'm not complaining as such. It's a cool problem to have, but when it comes to realism, it's off the scale. It's not even close. So in terms of leaving this car behind, it kind of makes sense and doesn't at the same time, because the Mercedes CL, especially of this generation, has always been one of those cars that has kind of slipped under the market radar a little bit, both in games and, ironically, in real life as well. You can buy Mercedes CLs of this shape for dirt cheap money here in the UK. I'm talking literally like two grand, four grand, ridiculously cheap. And although that's not the V12 version, 
The idea of buying any of these for that kind of money is insane. In fact, it's the kind of car that I would probably end up owning at some point given my track record. But that doesn't change the fact of how good it is. It is, in effect, the highest class sleeper imaginable, <laughs> which is a niche if there ever there was one. As far as the price goes as well, it's shockingly cheap, and that makes no sense either because usually one of the consistent things between Gran Turismo and Forza is that there are certain manufacturers that always have a high price. Aston Martin, Jaguar, and Mercedes tend to be three of the top ones. You will rarely find any of their 90s or 2000s era cars for less than six figures. Yet this thing is 62 grand. That's like Corvette money. And in this game, that's not even an exaggeration. This is literally four grand cheaper than the Corvette C6. That's crazy for a car that has, as I said, over 600 horsepower. And it's the kind of machine where if you do choose to buy it, it's almost like, once again, a German muscle car, because you don't need to worry about the power and the torque. If you just concentrate on the suspension, the brakes, and especially dropping the weight, the sheer power and torque and stability that the car already has just improves tenfold naturally. If you drop so much of the weight out of the car, it is without a doubt going to become a borderline supercar level machine. And I'm surprised that more people in real life don't actually buy up some of these older AMGs and do just that. It's still a large car, of course, and you're never going to change that, but so is a Nissan GTR, and that doesn't stop it from being great. So ultimately, I love unicorns like this popping up. It's a crazy good car in terms of the spec. It's way too good, which is a nice problem to have in the game. And of the three, as I said, it kind of makes sense that they would leave this one behind, but it's still a shame that they did, because what an understated, continent-crushing monster the CL65 truly is. But that's it for this review. Of course, click here on screen to see all of my other Forza reviews. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.